Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on Pisces. Now we will start with the next category that is Tetrapoda. The word Tetrapoda, what does it mean? Tetra means four, Poda means leg or leg-like structure. So these are basically those organisms with four limbs. The fossil records indicate that lobe finned fishes were ancestors of tetrapods. So the tetrapods actually came up from these kind of fishes. They bear limbs. That is the most important characteristic of the tetrapod. That is they bear limbs and these limbs help in their locomotion. Animals with four feet or legs or leg like structures. Now it is not necessary that all the classes which we discuss under tetrapoda, all of them will have legs. Some might have feet, some might have legs modified in some other form, but they will have four limbs. Mostly they are terrestrial, however some of them are also can also live in water. So let us look at the subclassification of tetrapoda, amphibia, reptilia, aves, and mammalia. So these are the four classes into which tetrapoda have been classified. So now we will discuss about each of these classes in detail. So let us start with amphibia. Frog, which you can see on the screen. Frog comes under amphibia. The word amphi means dual. Amphi means dual and bia means something related to life. So those organisms which can live both on land as well as in water, that is they can, they have this dual characteristic both on land and in water, they are known as amphibians. Their plural form is amphibia. They have two pairs of limbs, that is total four limbs. So here you can see these are the hind limbs and these are the four limbs. So two pairs in front, two at back. So total two pairs or four limbs. Movement involves hopping and jumping. Tail present in some of them but not all. Scales are absent on skin but still the skin is moist. Why is it moist? Due to the presence of mucous glands over skin. Respiration occurs through gills or lungs. Some of them have gills, some of them have lungs. So gills are used for respiration in water. Cold-blooded, they also cannot regulate their internal body temperature. Three chambered heart, like in case of fishes we saw two chambered heart but here they have three chambers. So we will talk about the circulatory system or the circulation process with a three chambered heart as well. Reproduction, they are oviparous that is they lay eggs and do not directly give birth to their young ones. Let us look at some examples of amphibia, salamander, frog, toad, tree frog. These are some of the examples of amphibia. So you can see these uh, organisms both in land as well as water. So let us talk about the organ systems of amphibia. Digestive system. They have a complete digestive tract with mouth, modified teeth, esophagus, stomach, intestine, liver and pancreas. Respiratory system, gills or lungs. Gills when in water, lungs when on land. Circulatory system, closed type, that is they have blood vessels to carry blood from heart to different parts of the body and vice versa. So let us discuss about the closed circulatory system of the amphibians. So these amphibians have a three chambered heart. So what are those three chambers? Two auricles and one ventricle. So two auricles, we will denote them as left auricle as LA and right auricle as RA. So in this case, double circulation takes place. Now we will see how double circulation happens. So let us look at the process of circulation in this case. Now let us suppose this is the heart of an amphibian. So it has got three chambers like this. This is right auricle, this is left auricle and this is the ventricle. So these are the three chambers of the heart. Now let us suppose these are the lungs or gills, whichever may be the respiratory organ. So these lungs will send the oxygenated blood to the heart. 
to the left auricle. So auricles are the receiving chambers, right? So the left auricle will receive the oxygenated blood from the lungs. Then this left auricle will send this to the ventricle and the ventricle will send this oxygenated blood to different parts of the body. So this is also oxygenated blood. Now as it goes to different parts of the body, the oxygen will get used up and the blood will become deoxygenated. So the from different parts of the body, the deoxygenated blood will be sent back to the heart, to the right auricle. So this is the deoxygenated blood. Now this right auricle will send the deoxygenated blood to the ventricle and ventricle being the pumping chamber will send this deoxygenated blood back to the lungs. So now here if you see in one cycle, how many times the blood actually crossed the heart? It crossed two times. First, when the oxygenated blood was sent, that time it crossed it once. Again, when the deoxygenated blood was sent to back to the lungs, again it crossed one more times. So that means it passed across the heart two times. So that is why it is known as double circulation. So in this case, since there are two auricles, therefore the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood are separated in the auricles because the uh, right auricle will deal with the deoxygenated blood, the left auricle will deal with the oxygenated blood. So there will be no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in the auricles. However, there will be mixing in the ventricle because there is only one ventricle. So this is how double circulation takes place in amphibians. Now in the reptiles also they have a three chambered heart and the same process takes place even in reptiles. However, there is one exception which is a crocodile. So crocodile is the only reptile which has a four chambered heart. So there the circulation process is little different. It is not in this way. So there they also have two ventricles. Okay, so let us continue with the uh, organ systems. So let us talk about the excretory system. The excretory system here consists of the alimentary canal, urinary and reproductive tracts. All these open into a common chamber called cloaca which opens to the exterior. So this cloaca basically acts as the specialized organ or means of excretion. Talking about the sensory organs, they have eyes with eyelids. They also have a tympanum which represents the ear. So here you can see the eye. So this is the eye and just below the eye you have a structure which is which functions as ear that is known as tympanum. So this is there is no special opening for ear. This tympanum is a substitute for ear. Now, if you talk about the body structure of an amphibian, the body can be divided into two parts broadly. The upper region is known as the head and the lower part is the trunk. So this is the eye, this is the tympanum and this is the mouth. Talking about reproduction, the sexes are separate here, external fertilization takes place, oviparous that is they lay eggs, development can be direct or indirect. That is in some of them a larval stage is in, involved while in some it is not involved. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.